Hi, this is Howard Schwartz, and in this video I'm going to start to show you the first calligraphic style that I'd like to teach you using a broad-edged pen in Photoshop using a Wacom tablet. And the style that I've chosen is Gothic. And the reason I've chosen Gothic is because I wanted to start out with a calligraphic style that just uses um, straight lines without any curves, which is a little bit more difficult than it might seem. So the first thing that I want to do is I want to make some changes to the brush that I have selected. And the main change that I want to make, just get to this, is to change the angle from 45 degrees to 90 degrees. Now, I'm not doing that because I'm going to write the strokes at uh, 90 degrees. I'm doing it in order to make the, uh, the measurements that I'm about to show you. So, oh, the other change that I have to make is I'm going to go into Preferences in Photoshop and under Cursors, I'm going to change uh, the cursor from the standard, which is the default, to the full-size brush tip. So let me select that. And so now, what you'll see is instead of the brush itself, you're going to see uh, the line, which is the, uh, what the broad edge pen, um, which is the, the width of the broad edge pen. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make the, the distance between the baseline and the X line of the, of the strokes equal to five pen widths. So let me uh, draw that for you now and you'll see what I'm talking about. So there's one, two, three, and well, that wasn't so good. Four and five. Okay. Now what I'm going to do is take the ruler and come down so that there'll be a ruler at the top of the stroke and a ruler at the bottom of the stroke. Like so. Now for this particular calligraphic style, in lowercase, there are primarily three strokes that you have to be concerned with. I'm going to demonstrate those three strokes now. The first stroke is a little diamond stroke. Oh, and, and before I make the stroke, I have to go back into my brush settings and change the angle back to 45 degrees. Okay. So the first stroke is, is, is a square on its side, which is, which is a diamond. And when I start the stroke, the left point, the left point of the broad edge, is going to be on the top of the line, of this blue line over here. And I'm going to draw the stroke diagonally. And when I finish the stroke, the right side of this broad edge pen is going to be on the blue line. So let me demonstrate that so what I'm saying makes a little bit more sense. Yeah, let, me, let me do it a little bit more accurately than that. Hmm. Yeah, that's a little bit better. You want it to be a nice short stroke. Yeah, that's it. That's more along the lines of what I want. Let me uh, erase the ones that aren't so good. Now the second stroke is the same as the first stroke, but instead of making a square or a diamond-like shape, you're going to make it a little bit um, wider. So let me use a different color for that. I'm going to do that in red. 
Same basic stroke, but just a little bit wide. Actually, similar to the ones I just erased. So I'm starting again with the broad edge on the blue line. Like so. Let's see if I can get a little bit more accurate. This is actually one of the disadvantages of doing this in Photoshop as opposed to doing it with a real pen on real paper because it's a little bit more difficult to see exactly where you're placing the pen in this case the the Wacom uh, the Wacom pen this is a, 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 it's called an art pen uh, but there are certain advantages to doing it this way also doing it in Photoshop and the imperfections that you get by not having it exactly on the line I think can create some interesting effects. So now the, th the, third, the third stroke which is used a lot, and I'm going to change the color again and make it yellow this time, is a vertical line. And I'm going to start that vertical line with the right edge of the broad edge pen on the top of the, uh, you know, and making contact with the top blue line. And when I come down, as a vertical, I'm going to stop where the left uh, side of the, le the left edge of the broad edge pen meets the bottom blue line. So these are the three basic strokes. So now I'm going to demonstrate how you would make uh, some letters of the alphabet using those three strokes. And the first stroke I'm going to make is the uh, the letter I. And I'm going to do that in, in in green just so what I'm doing appears to be more colorful. So I'm going to select green. Uh, so let's select this one. And I'm going to do this all in one stroke. Now there are times when I've done this pen on paper where I, I would take the pen uh, off the paper with each part of the stroke. And the reason I was doing that was because I didn't want there to be any hint of a curve. And I thought if I made the three strokes individually, I would eliminate the curve and get, get a straighter stroke, which is what you want doing, doing Gothic. But the disadvantage of doing that here is it's a little bit more difficult to line things up properly. So I'm just going to do this all as one stroke. So that would be an I. And um, as far as dotting the I, there are a number of ways of doing that. One way of doing it is just to do a vertical line like so. And that's, and, that, and that's your eye. So the top stroke and the bottom stroke are basically this blue diamond-like stroke. And the stroke in the middle is this long uh, yellow stroke. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to make uh, another letter. And just to give myself a little bit more room, I'm going to erase one of these strokes that I made in red. And now I'm going to try to make an O. And with the O, I'm going to start in the same place. Well, actually not. I'm going, to start, I'm going to be starting with this yellow vertical stroke. Like so. And then go right into the first stroke that's in blue. And then I'm going to come up here to the top I'm going to make that same blue stroke again. And then I'm going to come down and make the, uh, the vertical stroke that I, that I started out with. So th this, this O is comprised, it's made up of the two vertical strokes and the two diamond-like strokes. Now, and one of the interesting things about doing this type of calligraphy in, 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 in this style is that since you're only focused on straight lines, it will make you more aware 
of um, not only making straight lines here because you have the grid here as a comparison, but it also makes you more aware of the thickness of each stroke. So for example, the thickness of this blue stroke is going to be a little bit thicker than the thickness of this uh, yellow stroke. And the reason for that is that I'm going in a different direction. When, whenever the, um, the angle is 45 degrees as far as the pen, pen is concerned, when you actually make strokes that are going in 45 degrees, that's going to be the thickest stroke you can make. So let me just do one other letter and, um, and then we'll, we'll call it a day as far as this video is concerned and make additional letters in the next video. So I'm going to, uh, just to give myself a little bit more room, I'm going to erase this first stroke that I made in red. And then I'm going to select um, red again. I'm basically going to do the same thing that I did when I was making the O, but when I finish it, I'm going to add an additional stroke that will make it an A. So here's that first vertical stroke, and here's the diamond stroke. Here's another diamond stroke. and another vertical stroke. So, so far what I, what I did is the same thing as I did when I made the O, but the one difference is I'm going to add a diamond stroke at the end, and that becomes an A. And just to give credit where credit is due, I learned this uh, style of calligraphy from uh, Marty Oberstein uh, almost 40 years ago at the School of Visual Arts. And um, Marty Oberstein was a great influence over my, uh, uh, he, he was the one that made me fall in love with, with learning calligraphy and being a calligrapher. Because even, even though he wasn't in the best of health when he was teaching that class at the School of Visual Arts, he had a lot of difficulty getting on and off of the platform that, that he used when he did his demonstrations in front of the class. When he would draw the letters in, in, in front of the class, with this very big magic marker, very thick broad edge magic marker, his hand was very steady. He he was he, he wasn't um, he wasn't that steady otherwise in terms of being able to move about. He wasn't in the best of health, but calligraphically he was he was in the he was in the best of health, and his love of letters at that time uh, transferred onto me, and made me um, love calligraphy as much as as much as he did. So I just wanted to give him uh, credit and, and remember him. So that's it as far as this lesson is concerned. As I said, in the next lesson, I'll make some more letters and I'll put a, put a word or two together so you'll see how the letters relate to each other better. So thank you for, for watching.